Well, what's up, everybody? It's Spare with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Stationeers. Uh, I know my schedule has been fairly erratic lately in when I'm uploading and what I'm uploading. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me, but basically it's about as erratic as my actual schedule behind the camera. So I don't really know when I'll be putting out what and things like that. Um, you'll probably the things you can probably count on is probably feed the beast at semi regular, probably at least once an episode once a week, something like that, um, and maybe some stationary stuff. I'm not too sure about uh, Elite and Space Engineers at the moment because mainly most of my recording stuff is coming from things that I'm kind of like playing off camera type thing like I'm already playing it anyway so I just go ahead and record progress updates type thing and I wanted to play some stationers because I saw that they did a fairly big update um, predominantly they added stuff like there's some new logic gate stuff which I have yet to dabble into um, they added some kind of graph chart thing you can use now on on the logic circuits um, there's the Elevators is a cool addition that I want to look into as well as uh, I think the biggest thing was hydroponic trays um, At first I thought they were a entire reimagining of how hydroponics work, but apparently it's more of a Way to do it without having to have all this glass, uh, but the chemical and um, not chemical really, but the um, the gas mixture type stuff and things still needs to be present. So I was originally thinking I would end up overhauling my entire room, but I don't think I'll actually need to do that. Um, but predominantly it adds like a UV light, so you don't have to have daylight. It can just grow 24-7 with power, which is cool. You might be wondering what this is. I don't really remember, to be honest, what happened in my last episode. Um, I started recording this setup here and what it all does. Um, I think after my last episode, but it never aired. Like, I never finished that episode because it was during uh, the filming of this kind of stuff that then some stuff started happening and I started getting busy and I couldn't uh, ever come back and finish it, so I ended up just scrapping it. Um, I actually recorded footage yesterday, or the I don't know when this is going to get uploaded, but Monday. Uh, I recorded it twice, and both times the first one, um, I, for some reason, wasn't recording my mic or the game sound for some reason. Um, and then the second time, I started redoing it, and it got interrupted. So it's just been, that's that's why I don't really have a regular schedule right now, is because I personally don't have a regular schedule <laughs> right now. Uh, for those of you that are interested in the, the situation behind the scenes, the dog's doing okay, uh, grandma's doing okay. Um, again, kind of the all things considered ballpark kind of thing. Um, but uh, as far as the job stuff goes, I'm still working on trying to set up a meeting with the guy I'm supposed to be talking to, but he's a very, very busy guy. Uh, so we haven't really found a time that works for both of us. We keep having to reschedule stuff. So I was hoping to know more after Monday, uh, but I don't at the time I'm recording this. So um, I will let you guys know if something like that transpires or solidifies because it would drastically affect my my recording schedule which is already being affected so i appreciate you guys hanging in there uh but if you can hang in there for with me for just a little bit longer with some of this irregular uploads and random stuff um eventually i can't speak to what the schedule will be if the job stuff pans out but eventually one way or another i will end up with a more stable um scheduled content upload stuff but uh all right so the psa kind of out of the way Let's uh, let's dive in. So basically, I do remember, this is an old save, I had done some work and then I didn't end up saving it. So I do know that I need to change this. Nope, I, I did that last time. It's this one. Nope. Dang, nab it. There we go. So I need to change that to 0.7. Um, so let me see if I can run through this really quickly. Basically, what this setup does is we have a gas sensor, and we have our two fill and flood vents, or, or vacuum and fill vents, whatever I called them. Flood and vacuum, sure, whatever. Um, and pretty much what this setup here is supposed to do is regulate the system without me messing with it. Now, the only thing it doesn't compensate for is temperature, which I'll have to put in uh, wall heaters or something and w wire that up separately. But um, pretty much we have a logic reader for the pressure and the oxygen ratio. And then we have our 
um, logic writers for the vents to pressurize the base, uh, the gas mixer, the valves for the O2 and the N2, and then a uh, depressurize writer for the vent. And what do you do? Oh, okay. I had it set up to depressurize if the ratio was wrong or if the pressure got too high. So there's two. Um, there's two for that. Though, actually, I don't need to, do I? Well, yeah, no, actually, I do because it's comparing to the max pressure and this one's comparing to the O2. Okay, I was thinking since they wrote to the same vent, I could just use one, but I can't. Um, now, you might be wondering why I set this here. So, this was a weird thing that I ran into. We have a gas mixer for O2 and N2 that's set to an 80-20 mix. However, when I ran this before, uh, in between, uh, off camera, it, um, when it finally balanced out, the ratio was 79 to 21. Why, I don't know. Um, it could have to do with how much I actually have in the tanks, and so it couldn't do anymore. I'm not really sure. Uh, but with it at 79, and this set to 80, um, this would always be set to 1. So it would never turn off the vacuum vent. It was keeping the fill vent on the entire time. and Or the vacuum vent on the entire time. So it was just cycling air. Um, and so I found this weird setup where if I set this to 0.7, it's not... Um, it's, it's low enough that the 79 part won't trip it. To where it won't trigger it but because we have a gas mixer what's coming into the room should never be more than a 79 21 81 19 somewhere in there um so the fact that it'll never get that different um the 0.7 works now if i didn't have a gas mixer and i was just like basically turning on the oxygen or nitrogen based on whatever, I'd have to do something a little different. But the way it's set up, this does work, and because of the gas mixer, it still keeps it around an 80-20, uh, provided there's no extra stuff in the room. So, let's go through and turn all these on. And again, that's kind of the simple explanation. So we have the, the thing there, and then we have comparator units to check for the minimum pressure, which I have set to 50, the max pressure, which I have set, set to 80, and then the O2 ratio, which is set to 0.7. So if it's uh, less than 0.7, it turns the, the vacuum vent on and pulls the air out of the room. If its pressure goes above 80, pulls it out of the room. If the pressure goes below 50, it turns this on and fills the room. Um, and so when you combine all those together, then you basically have, as long as you're not above a certain pressure or your oxygen ratio is set, it'll just fill up the room until, um, basically until it ends up. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not right. Oh, okay. So here's an interesting situation. It's technically below this, or I mean above the 0.7, but it hasn't really fixed this yet. So let's actually turn this back up and then that'll trigger that. It'll pull it down to f below 50, which then turns this guy on. Why that came on first, I'm not really sure. Um, and now once this goes below 0.7 and it empties the room, we should be able to switch that. So I found this to set to 0.7 after I had already vented the room and this wouldn't turn off to fill the rest of the room. So that's where I messed up uh, because it was set to 0.8 when I started. And as you can see, according to the ratio, even though our pressure's down, it's still at 0.73. Um, so it has to pretty much drain the entire room uh, before before we'll actually get to a point where I can switch that. Um, because you can see I have 5% pollutants, there's 2% CO2, like there's stuff in the room um, that's making this wrong. Now once I've drained it and then I put in the, uh, set this to 0.7, I can go back to doing that because what I'm pumping into the room is a pure mix. Now there is a better way to do it if you wanted to be really precise. What you could do, and it's what I did in the hydroponics room, but I just didn't feel like making the extra circuits. What you could do is um, run the memory 
and I don't know if you'd need this one or not. You probably would. Uh, but basically, you could run both of these into a math node. They might have to be separate math nodes, but uh, you would run them into math nodes to multiply them by 100, I believe. And that would basically set it to 8, and then this would be... Um, or no, it would be 80, and then this would be 73. Um, and then you could do more precise with the memory unit kind of thing. You could do more precise, because uh, I can't go to a second, uh, a second, a second decimal place. That's that's the problem here. The smallest decrease I can do holding the Alt key will only move this by one, like 0.1. Um, so if you wanted to do 8.5 or 8.3, you would have to scale it up to something to where you have an extra decimal point to play with. Um, so the simplest solution is multiply about, uh, by um, 100, and then you would basically be able to uh, do more precise decimal con uh, control. And then I could put this at like 0.75 or 0.79, and this would still trigger this to empty the room. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about, where we have like barely any pressure in the room, but it's still a 73% ratio. So it has to like fully drain the room first before we can switch that back to a, a 0.7 uh, for this to work. Because this has to basically drop below 0.7 before you could set this to 0.7 and it won't trigger it. Um, that didn't make any sense, actually. Oh, I see. I see what I meant to say. What I meant to say was you have to have this at below 0.7 uh, before you can set this to 0.7 and have this still stay on so that it still cleans up the air. That's what I was really meaning to say. I, that didn't sound right in my head, and I was like, hold on, that's not what I meant. Um, but because this works, we can now go back and put the floor down, which is cool. And I'm going to leave that one, actually, because I do have to change that that one memory unit, so I'm going to leave that. Um, and then, and I apologize if you hear a bunch of popping in the background. I don't know if that's coming through or not, but uh, apparently we're having some random freak uh, stum stummer. Man, I cannot talk today. Summer storms is what I meant to say. It's not really like raining or anything. It's just decided it wanted to make noise. Um, now, one thing that I wanted to dabble in. Is it dark out? It is. Okay. I saw that my power's low and I was wondering why. Uh, we do need to keep an eye on this, but I'm not too worried about it. So one of the things that they added, they added a bunch of stuff actually since the, since my last episode. There was a couple fairly significant patches. We have firearms and handguns and I don't know why this is dubbed firearm SNG and then this is just handgun. That's kind of weird. I would think it'd be firearm handgun or something. But whatever. Um, apparently there were weapons before. There was a rifle and a pistol or something, but they were like laser or energy weapons or something. I, I don't really remember ever seeing them. Um, but you'll also... The one I'm looking at is the kit hydroponic station, not to be confused with the hydroponic tray. And the station here... Uh, I know I don't have what I need, so I can turn this on. It's 5 gold, 20 copper, 10 steel, and 5 nickel. So it's not really that cheap, in my opinion. Um, but essentially, like I said before, that's the that's the tray that we can hook up in here. And where these hold one, the hydroponic stations or kits or whatever they were called, I forgot already, will hold four. And then if you still supply them with water, but if you supply them with power, then the little UV light comes on and um, you don't actually have to have sunlight. And so you can grow them 24-7, which is kind of cool. Um, so let me do a little bit of work off camera real quick. I'm going to see if we can make at least one of those and, and try and set one up. And I'm going to let the air uh, regulate out a little bit and then I can set this back and put the floor down. Okay, so I started to smelt up some nickel because we're going to need it for the hydroponics. And I also thought about this pumping out more stuff into the room. So I thought this would be a good time to check it, and, I, and it is. So you can see that we have 0% now for our oxygen. Um, so now if I set this to 0.7, we'll see that this doesn't actually turn anything off because it's below it. Um, so that's what I was meaning before was when I set this to 0.7 and it was 0.8, 
uh, or a 0.73, it wasn't doing anything. Like there wasn't any change in the, uh, it wasn't turning on the vent and we were above the pressure threshold. Um, so we weren't getting any um, automated stuff. But now that we have this, it will basically pump out the the room uh, when it's uh, when the ratio drops below 70 percent uh, which ideally I wanted it at 80 but like I said when I flood the room again it, it ends up doing this weird thing where it's at 79 and so that still triggers this to stay on if it's 0.8 and and the room never fills back up so with that it's not regulated for temperature yet but we should have an automated um, airflow system to where when we do you know, like this, when we turn stuff on and things, it's currently emptying the room as this is going, as this is pumping out stuff. And then once it stops, then our gas mixer and everything will uh, push out what we have. So that's kind of the theory, at least. Okay, so we should start seeing this change here any minute now because our pressure is almost nothing in the room. Um, actually, I'm not really even sure why it hasn't started yet, because now it's set to zero. There we go. So it emptied completely, and now we have a perfect blend coming through. Now, this is actually interesting, because this time that I did it, now it's coming through as 80-20. I'm not really sure what happened here. And so I may go back and change it again, which might actually work out perfectly, because... I also forgot to show off another cool feature that they've added. Uh, where is it? Should be this one, right? And that is that... Let me just double check and make sure this is accurate. Yeah, it is. So I don't know what happened before, unless it was something really minute. Um, like it, it didn't quite get everything out of the room or something. I don't know. I don't know how it, I don't know how it was doing it. But... Um, one of the things that they've changed is that now you can not only use a labeler, before you could use the labeler to set the, the label. Now, you can actually set this manually, which I hadn't even thought of trying to do. Let's see if this works. So if we do point, let's say 77, will this actually work for it? It does! Oh, okay! So totally new feature fixed our entire problem. So let's leave it for like 70. So if you want something specific, just disregard everything I just said about the math node stuff. You can just use a labeler now and put in the exact number that you want. That's awesome. Now, I don't know how this works too. You need a screwdriver to change this. Okay, so selecting individual things like items you would need. But if you're actually specifying a value, you can just put it through here. Here. Why does that have a little arrow? That's weird. Huh. Interesting. Well, that just fixed all of our problems for that, so that's pretty awesome. And let's double check. So we have a nice 80-20 blend. Now, you'll notice that our temperature isn't right, but that's, again, that's more of a wall heater issue than it is a vent thing. But now, we do actually have a setup that we don't have to worry about our, our vent anymore. When we put stuff in here and we smelt it, it'll just, if it detects too much toxins in the air, it'll just um, empty out the the air and fill it with uh, the right stuff. Now we do have to kind of pay attention to that as far as um, I didn't really set it up to be mindful of you walking around here without a suit on, so if it tries to drain it, it could drain all of the room like it did before without um, filling up the room first kind of thing, if that makes any sense. So it's very likely if I was just walking around here without my suit on and this vent starts to decide to clean up the room, I basically could end up dying because it could just suck all the room airs out, the air in the room out before it fills it back up. So it's not perfect, but it'll work instead of me having to constantly clean up the room it'll just kind of do it on its own now over here I wanted to show off a couple things because I forgot entirely about the labeler thing but it also reminded me of a couple new things there's also a smart gas canister which I haven't seen what this stuff costs yet um, and the smart gas canisters are like the 
the air tanks, but they can actually, uh, they, excuse me, they have a, they, uh, a view readout type of thing. Like it has a little gra uh, a bar on it for how full it is, which is cool. And there's also a container mount. Now we had tank con connectors before for stuff like this to, to lock them in place. Um, I don't know if it'll work for these or not, but it's it's for these, uh, for this, the containers, the, the trunks, basically. We always have those floating around everywhere. Now they have a mount for it. Um, so if we turn this on, it should make our hydroponic station because I, I put in enough stuff for that. Um, I want to see if I can make a, a container mount so we can lock this one in, but then the other stuff I'm not sure if I'm going to make or not. Okay, so that's 10 iron. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and throw you in there so there's nothing in the way. Oh, they changed this too. That's cool. It actually has kind of like a... What do you cost? Oh, silicon. Okay, so two copper, eight steel, and two silicon. We don't need that right now, so I'll scrap it. And I did want to make a tank connector only because this thing's been floating around and I'd like to lock it in somewhere. Um... So we're going to do that too. But predominantly, I'm going to probably do those two off camera or something, but I want to work with the, um, with this guy, with the limited time that I have. Let me go ahead and save it and play around with this a minute, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I was tinkering around with this. I put this over here. It's actually kind of halfway into the wall, but I wanted it just out of the way. I really didn't need it for anything, so I wasn't worried about having it properly hooked up. But if you're wanting to use it, I don't know that that's really a good idea to do. Um, so I put this one over here. Again, it's kind of in the way with this, but it's out of the way for me. So that's kind of ultimately the, the point. So I'm thinking this should work the same way as the tank connectors. So if we can finagle this guy in here-ish and then connect it. Awesome. So that's how that works. Uh, so we can still get to our stuff, which is great, but it's totally out of the way and not bouncing around, which is awesome. Um, as you can see, I'm making some cable because um, I'm going to need power for the new hydroponics setup. Uh, I'm actually going to grab this as well because I don't know if I'm going to need any extra piping. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to wait for this to finish. I was thinking it'd be done by now. And then we'll start setting up the, um, the new hydroponics set setup. Alrighty, so the sun's coming up now, which makes this a good time to see what's going on here. I am going to go ahead and harvest these, uh, just in case it decides to do anything weird. We won't ruin our crop. And the last time I tried this, one of these only, like that, it only gave me one and then the plant got deleted. And I don't know what happens there when it does that, like if I'm clicking and dragging... I'm, I'm not really sure what that's doing. It, like that. It's like if it says one wheat and you click there, it just gives you one. So it's a, got, it's a weird collision box bug that I'm not sure how that works. Um, so with that out of the way, we should have that gone. Um, so you'll notice I have this kind of set up. I want to do the middle one because it gives me the most uh, stable environment. It's not like right next to the vent or right next to the heaters or anything like that that could cause it to be screwed up. Um, and I tied into this power line here and ran it through this. So that should be our power. This should be our data. And then this should be the water. Um, if I'm looking at this correctly... I think that's how that'll work. So, with that in mind, let's... Nope, give me that. I want to drop that. Uh, let's go ahead and start deconstructing this. I don't know... I don't know if I actually need to go... How far I need to go on these, so I'm just going to take these out entirely. Shouldn't... Oh. Oh, that could be a problem. Alright, I might have to redo that in a minute. I'm not worried about it. Uh, let's try this out here. So everything looks like it lines up. Boom. So this is the new hydroponic station, and there's a switch which turns 
the power on. Now, I don't know what kind of power draw this has, but you can see that we can do four in one instead of just one here. So that's partly why they're so expensive, I think. Um, oh, hush. So let's go ahead and plant. Now, at first, I thought these were completely sealed environments where... And it looks like we're, because we got the water and everything going, everything's fine and our atmosphere is all set up. So at first I was thinking that this is like, um, essentially a, a closed off habitat type of thing where, oh, okay, we could put those out in space and we could just, no, that's not how it works. Um, from what I've, from everything I'm seeing, you do still need, um, to have the room properly atmosphered if that's a, even a word. What it does do, though, is, for example, when the sun goes down and all these other plants aren't growing, we can turn this on, and now it would actually make them grow. I don't know if it makes them grow any faster, other than just they have consistent light. Um, so that's something we need to play around with, but I also don't know how much power draw it's going to have, so I need to keep an eye on our batteries. I don't think during the day it would be a problem, but you don't really need to run this during the day. Um, so there is something else for automating we could do. We could also set up a daylight sensor, like out here, or... I wonder if I could tie it into the existing one. I don't think so. I think that would be a lot of wiring hassle. Um, uh, while I'm, while I'm talking about this, let's see if I can't get this rewired. Or, or re-piped, I should say. Um... I don't really know what the easiest method would be to do it. Probably it would be to tie in this guy, I think. We can just do a straight one, because it, it should go through... I've never quite understood how they justified the pipe going through the straight cable, because it's like, yeah, no, I, I can't see anything wrong with um, possibly running water through a... Uh, a power line. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. Um, now it does seem to be growing a little bit faster over here, even though I planted them after, so that's interesting. I wonder if I turn the light on. I'm wondering if they get less light in here somehow, game-wise. I mean, there really shouldn't be, because they're, they're clear above, so if the sun's... it shouldn't do that. But I'm kind of wondering, since all of these have grown faster, if without the light on, if they grow slower in the hydroponic tra station. Um, oh, give me that. Actually, now that this is hooked back up, we'll grow some more. I'm a regular, regular botanist over here. Um, but yeah, I really like that. I really think that's cool because we don't have to worry about the, the sunlight being an issue. For growing crops we're still at 100 so water and your atmosphere and everything becomes far more of an issue now i am curious how adding more will affect the ratios because as it as it stands all of this was working fine but now i've added four more well three more into the mix um so yeah i'm kind of curious as to how that will actually stack up with um the atmosphere control and everything and making sure it can handle it like the uh, the heat and oxygen production um, I do think it's kind of cool though that uh, we're kind of in a setup not fully automated or anything but we're kind of in a setup where um, our plants are gonna be making more oxygen which then feeds back into our base and all that kind of stuff so I'm, I'm excited about that that we're getting a little more self-sufficient here and I can probably uh, go ahead and put this stuff back down. Let me see which way is it going. Um, so yeah, eventually I'd probably like to convert this whole thing to using the new hydroponic tra uh, stations. I gotta get the names right. Um, obviously that'd be fairly resource intensive, and I don't know if I have it right now, particularly in gold. Um, gold and steel and stuff like that. It does seem to grow slower in here, though. I am going to leave this off for now, just because I don't want to use up more power than we need. 
Um, but when it gets dark out, now we could still keep them growing. But what I'd, I'd eventually like to do, um, probably my next project, is to wire this up with... Um, as we go about trying to get all of these converted to stations, I'd like to wire them up to a daylight sensor to where um, during the day we could just use the sunlight and then at night the lights would kick on and it would uh, it would use the grow lights or growing lamps or whatever they're called. Um, I am curious if I'll have to add more coolers or uh, radiators or heaters or anything like that. Um, just in the in the adage of if I add all these, it's going to triple the amount of um, plants that are growing. These are one, these are four, so that's three more than what you would have. So you're looking at where I had nine. Um, let's see, nine, four. So it'd be like 36 plants instead of nine. Rough math. Um, so I don't know if our coolers and stuff can handle that or if we'd have to expand that. But I think we're getting to a point where we can probably turn hunger back on pretty soon. I think we're getting self-sufficient with our power and our atmospherics and stuff enough. Uh, the big issue is going to be keeping up the gas because uh, nitrogen... I don't think anything's producing nitrogen right now. And that's going to be a problem because this uses carbon dioxide. I don't think... I don't think we, as a human character, would produce enough carbon dioxide for all these plants to breathe. So carbon dioxide and nitrogen, I'm going to need to find a more somehow renewable source of sort of thing. But for now, I think this is cool, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about these new additions. I really like this kind of stuff, because now you could have an underground uh, wheat farm or plant farm or whatever. You wouldn't have to necessarily be on the surface. Um, they also added elevators, and it gave me the idea that I don't really know why I haven't worked more on building a subterranean base. So I think we're going to start working on that a little bit. So anyways, I think that's going to wrap this episode up. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Okay, so yeah, about that. Um, I just noticed one thing, and that's that these say they can be harvested, but they're much smaller. I don't know if they're actually growing slower or if it was just a smaller uh, graphical thing. So I just wanted to point that out as well that I just noticed. Um, so it may not have been faster or anything. I don't know. I'd have to compare it. But anyways, see this says no sunlight? These have sunlight. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, we're going to wrap things up here again. Sorry, I thought I was done, but I wasn't. So yeah, now I'm done. Peace.